yo, we hit that grid iron and we do run, run. I said we do run, run, get, we do run, run. I said we smash, we hit, now you run, run. I said now you run, run, get, now you run, run, run. run. We never slow down, purple and gold now. Yeah, it's going down. Bring it on. Yeah, you better squad up. Go ahead, line them up. We getting fired up. What up, JJ Vikings crew? Welcome back. As I direct our attention to the upcoming Week 2 game against the Philadelphia Eagles and our Minnesota Vikings, to some people, seem to not stand a chance against the Eagles. Their D-line has only improved since the last time we played. We, we faced them in Philadelphia, too. And primetime Kirk, we know how that goes. You know, we know how that turns out, you know, and... You know, Kirk is obviously playing for an extension, but he's also playing to win. He's playing to help our team win, and I think that he can. But with the way our schedule is, I mean, Eagles, Chiefs, Chargers, I mean, it's going to be rough. It's going to be real rough. And, you know, we, we do have Kirk to lead the way, but, I mean, honestly, our general manager, Quasi Adolfo Mensa, who I love a lot, by the way, as well as Kevin O'Connell, but Quasi. I think he should have addressed the O-line, the interior part of the O-line before the season. You know, that part is pretty clear. Uh, there's no way that we can bring in Dalton Risner before the game. That's just not going to happen. We're going to have to work with the O-line that we have. We could try moving maybe. Uh, we could move Blake Brandle to guard to try and see how that would work out. But the Eagles offensive line, Fletcher Cox, still plays at a high level. Um, you have a lot of guys out there that do what they got to do. And Fletcher Cox is definitely one of them. I've seen him since 2017. Uh, he played well, he played amazingly in the 2018 Super Bowl. Uh, 2017 and 2018 were his breakout years, and he definitely assaulted the Vikings so much, especially their old line. You know, we saw Riley Reef having trouble with him, Pat Elf line, the interior of the offensive line. I mean, he's been giving the Vikings old line trouble for so long, for so long. And we got to put an end to that. But with this kind of O-line, I don't, I don't know how. And no more tight end screens, okay? We, we saw how quick the Bucks defenders are, especially their linebackers. So uh, the, the Eagles linebackers, they're going to be just as quick, if not quicker. So obviously, you don't want to make that uh, mistake again. So no more tight end screens, okay? If it's second and 10, throw the ball 10 yards or take a shot downfield. You saw Justin Jefferson. He was open, you know? And we got to get him the ball a bit more. And by the way, uh, last game or last year, uh, people saying, oh, oh, was it, uh, 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 wow, how did I lose it that quickly? People were saying, oh, oh, Darius Slay locked down Justin Jefferson. Oh, Justin Jefferson was on clamps. He did not lock down Justin Jefferson, okay? The, the D line did, okay? If you're going to, if you're going to, well, if you want to seriously lock down Justin Jefferson, Pressure Kirk Cousins. Get into Kirk Cousins' head. It's all mental with Kirk. Obviously, um, he's not the he's not he's not a mobile quarterback. Okay, and a statue and a and a, and a non-mobile quarterback and a bad offensive line, mediocre to bad. Those two don't go together. And Kirk is obviously a pocket passer. And many people haven't noticed though. Kirk Cousins is one of the best quarterbacks to throw off of play action. He's really good at doing that. He throws dimes off of play action. But give him time. Let Kirk be mentally sure that he has the right offensive line to be able to let him uh, and let him watch a play develop. You know, KJ and Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, they're all sneaky. They'll get open. Give Kirk time with the old line, though. And I never thought that I would be looking at players like the offensive line, you know, because we want to look at the flashy players all the time on offense, like the – the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers, even the tight ends are flashy players too. But no, 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 no. You have to focus on what's really bothering you, and that's got to be the offensive line. Obviously, there are also those tight end screens. And don't keep CJ Ham on the field for so long, please. I'm begging, you know, because it's not going to work out for you if you keep him on the field for that long, you know. But hey, I still love Quasey. I still love Kevin, Kirk, you know, the whole coaching staff. But we got to figure out we got to figure something out you know cuz Kev, cuz Kevin O'Connell got out coached you know i'm not sure whether or not it was Jonathan Gannon that that out coached us i don't know if he's the defensive coordinator or the head coach for the i think he's the defensive coordinator for the eagles right now um 
Yeah, well, last time last time we played the Eagles, Jonathan Gannon was definitely there. But our team is concerning. Our offensive line is concerning. I don't have much hope against the Eagles coming up. But I like to be that surprisingly optimistic fan. Uh, but uh, you have to, you have to, you have, you have to obviously know the critiques, you know. And I, as an analyst, know the critiques, and you know, I will critique the team any anytime I can, even though I love them with all my with all my heart, mind, brain, you know. But overall, the offensive line is very concerning, and we do have like a slight chance, but it's not very, it's not much to build on, you know. But I think that Kevin O'Connell will definitely learn from the Vikings Bucks game. Um, keys to a victory. Give Kirk protection, pass protection, and time. Don't try to force a, don't try and force runs too much. Okay, don't try and do that. No more tight end screens. Okay, and you also have to, um, you also have to contain Jalen Hurts' QB scramble and his deep throws. Next, get bench Ed Ingram. Okay, bench Ed Ingram. He made he he made another stupid mistake after he said that he'd most likely be better this year. I don't really care if you say it's only week one, okay? He had to, he had his time to progress. He had his time to improve, and he's not showing anything different. And this situation is not going to fix itself, okay? And that's my analyst side speaking. This situation is not going to fix itself. So, Ed Ingram, bye-bye. Most likely, bye-bye, you know, so. Because there's no way. I mean, we did a okay to mediocre to blah job of, of containing Vita Vea. Um I don't quite remember him getting to Kirk Cousins, but he was he was sure close. He was definitely close. Um, can we contain Fletcher Cox, though, with the offensive line that we have? Can we contain that Eagles star offensive line, that superstar offensive line, or no, defensive line, my bad. Can we still contain that superstar defensive line of the Eagles with the way that our offensive line is? Can you sit down and tell me that we can honestly do that? Because I don't think we can. And... As soon as one of those players gets into Kirk's head, it's over for us, you know. And that's what locks down Justin Jefferson. Nothing else. Nothing else. So, it's tough. It's tough when you have a non-mobile quarterback, a, a pocket passer, and a battle of line. Those two don't mix. We've, we've, seen, we've seen and heard that before countless times. And uh, I'm only going to Philadelphia, but... But, hey, thank you guys for watching. Um, obviously going to be a tough game uh, in Philly, but we'll try and figure something out. But, hey, thanks for watching. Do the Vikings have a chance? Yes, but it's very small. Let's go try and get this win. We could shock the world. We'll see. But, hey, thanks for watching again. Skull Vikings. Yo, we hit that grid iron and we do run, run. I said we do run, run, yeah, we do run, run. I said we smash, we hit, now you run, run. I